Yeah, obviously very pleased with the victory. Northern Illinois is a really good football team. Um, obviously, they're coming off a really good win in Athens, beating OU 39-36, where they fought back from a 21-10 deficit. Obviously, they've been the premier program in our league for a long time, um, probably over a decade. There's been other really strong teams, but they've been at the forefront of getting it done in the MAC. So, um, to anytime you can beat Northern, uh, it's obviously a huge win for you. Obviously, any MAC wins a huge win. Uh, now, Ball State's the only left undefeated team. We're only three weeks in. Some people have played four, but most of us have just played three, and everybody's got a loss already. So, more of the same this weekend of unpredictability. Of it's going to be hard to win games, and we found a way to win a very, very difficult game where. They didn't turn it over. We didn't turn it over. We got, you know, we got the one late, and it was called back on offsides. But both teams played a clean game. There wasn't a ton of penalties. You know, each team had a probably middle to low amount of penalties, and it was a pretty clean game. And both teams executed, and both teams played hard. And uh, being down ten nothing, obviously, we talked Saturday. You know, the drive to end the half to get to ten to seven, then you back it up with another drive in the third quarter to get to fourteen to ten, and then to Northern's credit, they bounce right back and storm back down the field and take the lead. You know, just when you feel like, hey, you might have something going, you know, you don't. Um, and, and they make some plays and get it done. And then our offense responds again to get it to 21-17. And then, you know, I thought our defense settled back in and buckled down. And obviously we talked yardage was about even. The stats were pretty even. Um, biggest difference probably in the game's return yardage, 148-4, to 144-4. to four. So just the field position that that creates. Um, Sloman kicking the ball in the end zone. Um, not giving them an opportunity to even have return yardage. It wasn't like they didn't execute their returns. They didn't get a chance because Sloman's really, really done a special job for us. And then obviously our kickoff return team, and particularly Mo, and getting some blocks in front of them. And just again, even the one we got all the way down there and got no points, we ended up missing a field goal. It still flips the field. They still take over on their 15 yard line. I mean, and again, when you're talking about tight games, every yard makes a difference. So again, our special teams were a big part of the success we had. So it, it was. I felt good about all units. I thought all units played very good. I think offense really, you have 17 yards with five minutes to go in the first half and then to kind of explode the way they did the rest of the game, they moved the ball up and down the field. You know, so just for them to dig in and make some adjustments and bowl their neck a little bit and overcome some adversity. Then again, we've, you know, we've had two games, you know, down 14 to three and down 10 nothing. Uh, and our kids have really, really responded by just keep playing football. You know, there wasn't, any, hey, we got to do this. It was more just, hey, keep keep believing, keep digging, keep playing, and keep relying on one another. And you know, and even the Western game, we're down 21 to six, and get it back to 21 to 16, and have the ball with, you know, 13 minutes to go with a chance to take the lead. So, um, our kids very proud of just how they're playing, how they're preparing, um, and again, very proud to be Northern Northern Illinois. And you know, we've we've had a tough non-league go of it. Talked about Saturday, like. Our last seven MAC games have been against Buffalo a year ago, who was seven and one. OU, who was six and two. Northern, who won the U League at six and two. Ball State, uh, who's three and zero right now. So they they obviously had some players. Uh, and then you start this year off with Buffalo again, Western Michigan, and then Northern again. So six of our last seven MAC games are against really, really, really top end MAC teams, and our kids have played really well. And you know, we've won whatever, five of the last six and five of the seven overall. So just that increases your belief, that increases our confidence. We've been talking about it for a couple of years that we, you know, we can play with any team in this league. You know, We're not necessarily better than any team in this league, but we're as good as any team. And now you go through that seven game run where six of those seven are against the top teams in the league and, and you had the success, it just adds to the belief of the kids that, hey, it doesn't matter who you're playing in our league, we're, we're gonna have a chance to win. And that used to, that was a hurdle this, this program had to come back to overcome. We got to the point where we could, you know, we weren't playing with those teams. Then you got to the point where you're playing them, but we were having a hard time beating them. And why were we having a hard time beating them? Because we really didn't believe we could do it. You know, <laughs> the team late that believes probably has the better chance. So when you play a Northern, they believe. They've been winning those games. When you play, you know, when you play Buffalo, when you play the OUs, when you play those, they believe already because they've been having success. So now we're at the point where our kids don't, don't get rattled in those moments, you know, and aren't afraid to take the field late in the game with the game on the line and make plays. And I thought, you know, defensively, particularly the last two drives, even though Northern did a good job and had a 13-play drive and cut it to 27-24, I mean, I thought our kids played like we were aggressive, 
we mixed in coverages, we played man, we played zone, we played pressure zone, we played straight drop zone, and man, we were, we were aggressive. Our kids were down, low, locked in, take, you know, they throw an arrow route and we hit it for no gain. Your kids are down, ready to play and play. They're playing the game to win, which again is for us a great, a great step that our kids are at that point now. Uh, did you learn anything from watching the films uh, that you didn't know immediately after the game? I the offense played, to be honest with you. So I <laughs> saw, saw a lot of plays that I didn't see. Like I said, I saw a couple plays in the Jumbotron. We were all, you know, we're all just trying to stay focused and do our deal. Like I said, I got a lot of confidence in our offensive players and offensive coaches in the game. I'm on, you know, I'm on the headset most of the time when they're on offense, but I'm usually over there still, you know, dealing with things to do with defense at times. And Saturday in particular, just very close game. And, you know, Northern's doing different things, and then they get a different quarterback in the game, and there's some adjustments need to be made. And um, so, obviously, I thought, obviously, just like I felt Setter, Jalen had a huge game for us, um, seven for 135, and two, two really, really, all the plays were good. He ran routes, he got open, he made catches, but the one, the one that set up the one score towards, towards the, you know, home building, when he caught the ball, he got held. Got a penalty, still makes a great catch. Then that third and 11 catch was the guy really covered it well, was draped all over him, was playing the ball. And, and Jalen, you know, Brett threw in a good spot and Jalen, you know. And then Brett really, you know, from that five minute mark in the second quarter, he threw for like 270 yards and a half. I mean, basically a half in five minutes, a little over half. And then he ran, you know, key first down coming out in the third quarter, third and two, we were kind of drawn dead there. They hit us with a little torch blitz and Brett found a way to get us two yards, you know, and Gus used to do that a lot for us, and that was kind of Gus's deal, and, but Brett found a way. And then obviously as a 31-yard scramble, um, you know, and he's coming off. He got tweaked, tweaked, at, tweaked at Western, didn't practice a lot this week, and wasn't sure he's going to be able to go. And, but just his competitiveness, like he could have slid in four times on that 31-yard run, but he's trying to win a football game, you know, and, and credit to him. And then uh, I thought, Pieces of our offensive line were really, really good, and pieces were were a little bit inconsistent. But a lot of that has to do with Northern Illinois, a difficult team to to run the ball, and then they were doing a lot of run stunts too. I thought our protection was good, um, and then Dom steps up, make a play. Homer steps up, makes a play. Jalen made a bunch of plays. James May makes two more huge plays. So even without Sorensen, we're starting to get the production at the wideouts and the big plays. So hopefully, we're getting Jack back this week, and he'll just add to a group that's kind of growing as the year goes on. And um, so it just it's it was impressive for our offense to to just bounce back. They struggled at Western, then they had 17 yards for about 25 minutes. So there's a lot of reasons to doubt, and then they looked really good there, you know, for 35 straight minutes. So it was it was it was it was testament to the coaches, testament to the players to really bounce back and really lead us to victory in that second half. You only had five penalties, but three of them are offsides, which I've often wondered about. What, what are your feelings about those offsides penalties, which to me are, are, are fixable? Yeah, obviously you don't line up offside. That's a, that's a good one. That, yeah, no, we, we didn't have a ton of penalties. They didn't have a ton. It was, it was, it was a well, when you watched it Saturday night, it's a pretty good game. Like there's not, no one really gave. They make two long catches on us. You really can't fault the coverage. Kids holding us off and catching balls one hand. Jalen makes a couple plays. You can't fault the cover. Like it wasn't like Jalen's running, you know, wasn't running wide open. Like most people, most of the yards that were earned that game were earned, and they were hard to come by. And and then you mentioned the penalties. The thing, the other thing I said to D line was like, if they call an offside early, like sometimes everybody on both sides lines up offsides. It's one of those deals. It's not, it's not good or bad. It's just the way it is. There's times like you stand there and like everybody's offside and they're not really calling it. They're going to give you a little bit of the football. You know what I mean? Because everybody's trying to cheat the line of scrimmage. That's what every D-line is trying to do, cheat the line of scrimmage. The offensive linemen line up in the backfield, we line up over the ball. Like, but if they call you for being in the backfield offensively, then you got to adjust, you know? If they're going to call, like, if your normal alignment that you've gotten away with for four or five weeks is being called, well, then that's on you to adjust. That's not on the officials. They're calling the game how they see fit to call the game. So the first one I'm okay with. The second one, eh, I'm starting to get it. By the third one, and it's a deflected interception, now I'm not very happy because, well, this is how I always align. Okay, well, okay, we're six weeks in, and the first five weeks I was okay. This week it wasn't okay. But, again, you watch basketball. If they're calling it tight, you – you can sit there and complain about that they're calling it tight, you're going to fall out of the game. Or you can make the adjustment because that's how they're calling it. If they're calling it loose, then you should be more aggressive. So we're going to, you know, we're, 
punt teams don't line up in the back. You know, it's just the way it is. Like, so you got to get a, you know, officiating is call the game and they're, they're, they're in charge of the game and they called how they, and you got to adjust to, so to have three was a little frustrating, but I have only five penalties and three of them offside, you, you know, you played a pretty clean game. Um, is it even more frustrating when that third one's on a senior? Yeah. <laughs> no, certainly more frustrating than Sterling, <laughs> who, who should be among the nation leaders in interceptions right now and doesn't have anything to show for it. So has had three in the last, you know, three in the last two games. So now obviously, and again, it's a key point because we're, we're up 27-17, slow. Offense just went on a beautiful drive, used some clock, got it down there, took care of the football. Slowman comes in, makes a big kick, you're up 10, and then you get pressure on the quarterback and deflect a ball and Sterling had done a great job rerouting their, their tight ends who are tremendous players. I thought we did a great job on their tight ends who really have hurt everybody and they killed OU the week before. I just thought our kids really, you know, did a better job than I thought you could do against those guys. They, they, they're, they're just really good players. They really are. And he rerouted the tight end and got himself in position and then he gets a deflected ball. So yeah, that was, that was a frustrating one. We had to keep our cool and, you know, but that was always, because again, if you get that one, you get the ball somewhere around the 30 or whatever and you're up 10 with, you know, 5.40 left, you're going to at least burn a, you know, at least make them use their timeouts or burn some clock. So that, that wouldn't have maybe then the nail in the coffin, but have been pretty close. And then obviously when they drive down and score, you're really wishing you weren't offside. And then when we're second and two and then we fumble, then you're really wishing you weren't offsides, you know. <laughs> but then when you get the fourth down stop, you forget about it. <laughs> um. Uh, Kent State coming off a, a kind of a shootout loss there uh, at Ohio. What can you tell us about them? Yeah, they're they're playing really good. So they've, you know, they thumped BG right before BG beat Toledo pretty good. Um, they got after Akron pretty good. They played probably the only team that played as daunting or more daunting non-league schedule than us. Uh, playing Auburn and playing Wisconsin and who's the, in Arizona State. Yeah, so. They, and they, they had a hard fought win against Kennesaw where they tied it on the last second field goal and won in overtime against a really good Kennesaw team. I think it's a six and one at this time. So they've, they've played good and they even got some things done against Arizona State on both sides of the ball. They got some things done against Auburn on both sides of the ball. So they've, even in those games, they just like we felt like, hey, there was some positives, tons of positives in the Iowa game. We thought there was even some positives in the Ohio State game for a quarter, you know. I think they felt the same way that they did some, you know, they did some things they couldn't sustain and last. and keep doing it for four quarters, it's difficult, you know, but, and then in league they're 2-0 and and they go into Athens, which is obviously, OU's coming off a tough loss against Northern, so you know you're getting, not that you don't always get OU's best effort, but you know after a loss at home, they're, they're gonna, and, and Kent played them really tough a year ago, where, where OU barely, barely beat them a year ago, so they had that in their crawl too, so they, their quarterback's playing really good, uh, he runs, you know, if you take out sacks, he's their leading rusher, Scrambles a ton. They do have quarterback design runs, but he tucks it and runs a ton like Wasink does and, uh, and, and like the kid from OU does. Um, big, strong kid. He's got 10 touchdowns, no interceptions, thrown for a bunch of yards. They got three or four tailbacks at play that are all good and they're all fast. They got five or six receivers. They go up tempo. What they do, like we all go up tempo, but they're committed to it. Like they're a different up tempo than we've seen all year. They, are, they could snap it on 32 on the play clock which is warp speed fast. And when they get going, they're hard to stop. They got it going at times last week and just they're going up and down the field. And the defense can't even get set and the defense is gassed and you can't sub. And so they, they do a really good job of the tempo. And then, you know, they really spread the field. Uh, their wideouts almost line up out of bounds sometimes. They, they, they make you, they really stretch uh, you in the run game. They really stretch in the pass game. Their coaching staff does a tremendous job. Um, and then they have a bunch of run schemes and they got two guys pulling one guy way and another guy pulling another way and they got a read play on. So the ball could go either way. Like literally last week, they ran counter one way when they were, they were faxing the tight end behind the counter and the quarterback's reading. And I don't know what he's, I don't know what he's gonna read against us because I don't know which direction any of our guys are gonna be going, but uh, they, they do some really, really innovative things in the run game that have really, really helped them be successful. So um, you definitely have to have edges to your defense at all times. You got to do that every week. But against them, you definitely have to have edges to your defense. Um, and then defensively, they were really good a year ago. They didn't, they didn't give up a lot of yards, a lot of points a year ago. Um, and, and they played pretty salty defense. So, and they got a really good kicker. And their punter's averaging 42. So they're, they're pretty solid. They're, they're, they're going to win a bunch of games in the league this year. And, and going on the road and playing at Kent, 
um, will be will be will be difficult. Obviously, the road you always want to be at home, and playing on the road is always more difficult. But it'll, it'll be a great challenge for us. I think we're good, Coach. No, we have Sorry. Uh, one thing I've noticed about this team all year is how good the special teams has been for your uh, as a collective unit. And we all know about the Sloman and the Kramer, but what is working so well with this unit as a collective whole for you? Yeah, again, obviously Sloman, Crabtree, and Kramer, you talk about your punter, your kicker, and your long snapper, and then you have Mo as your punt returner and your kick returner. So the starting point of good special teams is good personnel. So at the key spots, we have really good personnel. That's that's the most thing. But as you are alluding to, it's not just Mo Thomas. We're doing a good job. Coach Shear is doing a really good job. He's got our kids really, really excited to play special teams. He's got them really believing how important it is, these units, and how much they can impact the game. And they're, our defense goes in every game with the idea that we're going to dictate the outcome of this game. Our offense goes in every week that it doesn't matter what the defense or STs, we're going to score enough points, we're going to win the game. That's the mindset. And Coach Shear's created that mindset on special teams that, hey, we're going to we're going to be the group that leads the charge. We're not, we're not here just to serve the offense or defense or be part of it. We're going to be the group that, you know, makes the difference. And really, they really have. You can argue that they've been our strongest unit of the three. And I think all three units play good Saturday. But obviously, we need all the points. We, Kramer's pinning them deep. Moe's our biggest advantage is in return yards. The yards on offense and defense were pretty damn even. You know, return yards. Not very even. So obviously he's got them playing at a high level, but mostly he's got them excited that it's not just important. We can we can win this game. We can we can determine the outcome of the game, and, and it's it's shown on the field. Congratulations on a great uh, a great day on on Saturday. Um, is is that something that evolved during the game, or were you expecting to be targeted so much going in? Um, after the week of practice, I was expecting some plays coming into the week but uh, not as much as we had on Saturday. Um, we practiced a couple of the deep plays that I had and um, some of the uh, plays during the middle of the game I wasn't really expecting, but I was also ready for them just because during the week of practice, we're always preaching, be ready for your opportunity to come. Yeah, um, how, how thrilling is it for you to contribute so heavily to really a must-win game. It was good. It felt good to be a part of something uh, that we did really well. Um, it felt good to contribute the way I did. Uh, coming into the game, I wasn't expecting that much uh, out of myself to contribute, uh, but I was happy with how it turned out. And there's also the, the, the factor of you contributing, coming up big uh, with Jack down. I mean, that puts a lot of pressure on yeah, it feels good. Jack's awesome. He's great, uh, great teammate, great guy, and he helps us out a lot. Um, I don't think there's much pressure because in our receiver room, we, we just like to have fun and just play football. And there's not pressure in football, it's just fun. Um, I knew it was a big game, and I had to be focused uh, on catching the ball and doing my task. Um, and we practice that all the time. Like after practice, we'll catch a bunch of balls, different positions, different catches. So I think I prepared myself over the last few months to make those plays on Saturday. Did you learn anything uh, about the game after watching film that you didn't know, like block playing or right end? Yeah, there was a couple plays that happened that I didn't realize happened. Um, the fumble that we had that we recovered, I didn't realize we fumbled the ball. Um, you mean the snap? No, not the snap. Oh. The the one Jalen had where he, it kind of bounced off uh, bounced off the ground and kind of went right back to him. Right. I was blocking downfield, so I didn't realize that happened. I just thought he got tackled. So how much uh, gut did you give Gabbert about the uh, snap fumble? <laughs> uh, I mean, it happens. Like. I, I kind of felt something was a little funny when I got closer to the line and we hadn't snapped the ball yet, but uh, we were fortunate to get on the ball and get out of, get out of that situation. That's going to be in my top ten, I think. Yeah. <laughs>
Jay, can you just talk a little bit about the team? Buffalo down 14 to three, and you down 10 nothing, but still able to just kind of circle the wagons, really get back at it. You know, just what's that gonna say about the team? I mean, it just says we're a resilient bunch. We've been preaching finish, finish, finish for the longest time. And the fact that we're able to come out into those situations and actually do that is really big for our team.